friends, and welcome to RV Retirement Redesign. And I wanted to just share with you very quickly that after the last video that I put out, I had a little accident and it wasn't anything big and major, but what happened was I hurt my hip and it's not broken and it really wasn't damaged extensively, but I was on crutches. And that made me think about how does one live in an RV when you're on crutches? or maybe even have a more significant disability. Is it workable? So today I'm gonna to share a little bit of my experiences. It's not what somebody who really has a severe injury that really depends on the crutches would experience, but it's something I thought might make you think, and it surely made me think about what would I need to prepare for maybe as I get older or if I have a significant injury. So watch the video, let me know your thoughts and let's share. And as a community, maybe we can be more prepared when these types of injuries do come into our lives. My first hurdle was actually even just coming up the stairs, but we have handrails on each side of the stairs coming up onto our deck, so it was okay. But I certainly had my trials trying to get into and through the screen and to figure out which leg, and it was my left hip. So where am I going to put the weight on? How am I going to do that with these crutches? And I did need them, and I'm going to tell you, it hurt under the arms. It was so weird trying to keep my balance. So this video is actually recorded about a week after the injury, and I'm at a place now where I, really I just need to have the crutch for stability and to be able to take the weight off that sore side. And I've been working really hard trying to stay into a routine, so I thought I would stick with it and try to make it work today, even though I knew I was going to have stumbling blocks. I knew it was going to take me a little longer, but today's the day that I replenish. So let me show you what I did. I had stomach problems for years, and I mean like 10, 15 years, and I came across this little breakfast recipe that really made a difference, and it was really when I started looking at what I was eating, and basically it's just reducing the gluten and eating more of the seeds and proteins rather than grains. So every week I try to do a whole batch for the full week. It's a recipe that you can kind of change up a little bit so you don't get completely tired of it. But frankly, the original recipe that I started with is the one I seem to like the most. And it's a very simple recipe. It simply is a tablespoon of chia seeds, a tablespoon of protein powder, a tablespoon of walnuts, and you also need a tablespoon of hemp hearts and a tablespoon of flaxseed, either whole or ground. So that's what I'm getting out of the refrigerator. So every time I move here, I have to watch where the crutch is going. Will it get caught up on something? And then like this time here, I don't always need to have it on because I can lean against the counter. So that's one of the bright sides of living in a small space is if you have the need to be close to something because of stability issues, then having a small space where you can grab onto the wall or a counter really does work in your favor. So I'm putting a tablespoon of each of these items in each of these little glass containers. Now, I shared with you before that I'm really trying to go with glass, but I had all of these down under on the bottom of a cabinet. What I found was when you try to bend down with a hip issue, that hurts. Trying to bend down and hold onto crutches and hold onto the counter and get the glass out, well, you can imagine how much fun that was. Okay, and here's a great tip of the day. If you have a magnetic refrigerator, and most of us do in RVs, I suggest getting a blank magnetic sheet that you can put up on your refrigerator, get a permanent marker, and mark on there what either where you go shopping or categories or whatever you want, what works for you. And then when you remember, like in this case, I remembered I needed to get some more flaxseed mail. So I stopped and I wrote it on there with a dry erase pen. Once I go shopping and buy that, I can erase it and it's waiting for me for the next time I need it. So I got seven of these containers all filled and they do need to be stored in the refrigerator because remember they have the hemp hearts and the flaxseed in there. And so I got all of the lids on. I got them all in a container and one is left out because guess what? It's breakfast time. So I do find it easier when I have all the ingredients ready for me as I need them. The tablespoon of coconut 
oil. Here's a little side trick. Once you put that in your pan, scrape off what's on your um, measuring spoon and put it on your nails and on your hands. Coconut oil is good for more than just eating. It's really good for your skin as well. Next, I have a teaspoon of vanilla. And I keep my frozen blueberries in a container that makes it easy to sprinkle about a fourth of a cup. It's okay if you get a few extra or a few less. And, and you can use up to a half a cup of your favorite nut milk or milk if you want it. I happen to like coconut milk. And I use a third of a cup in my particular recipe. I like my consistency to be a little thicker oatmeal type. And then I thin it down with the yogurt that I use. Now, while the blueberries are melting, I am chopping them up a little bit because I want to release that blueberry flavor throughout the liquid. And there are other flavors that you can add here too. A lot of times I'll add um, apples and cinnamon in the fall and, and strawberries or other kinds of berries, whatever you like, or even some maple syrup. And these are all kind of natural sugars that you can add. But just remember, the more combination you add, the more sugar, even natural sugar, you're adding to your, to your breakfast. Next, I'm going to add in that third cup of coconut milk. And while that is heating, I'm going to give my walnuts a quick chop. And I'm also going to get my bowl ready with a couple um, heaping teaspoons of, of yogurt. And then I'm going to go ahead and put all the dry ingredients into the... Now at this point, you just want to really watch this, but stir it up until all of the liquid has been absorbed into the seeds. And then you can go ahead and put it into your bowl, mix it into the yogurt really well, and enjoy your breakfast. By this time, I'm really ready to sit down for a while. My next project was to replenish my medication containers. Now, I don't take a lot of medication, but I do take quite a few supplements. So I love this little case that has these daily containers in them. I actually bought this for travel, and I find that I use them just through the weeks because they're so convenient. And I'll put a link below in case any of you would be interested in something like that. Now, you can also see I have a crutch up on the stairs. Because I'm just using one, and like I said, being in a small, tiny home, you're able to be to hold on to the wall as well as to a crutch. So I have found leaving one below the stairs and one above the stairs really is a helpful kind of thing for me. So I'm curious how many of you are really good about taking your medicine on a daily basis. Because I have some I take in the morning and some I take at night. It seemed to either do good in the morning or good at night, but not for the full day. And I have a tracker on my calendar, my daily calendar. But sometimes if I'm not really busy, I don't go look at it. So I don't know that I'm missing it. So put your comments below on how you remember to take your medications and maybe we can help each other. One of the things I appreciated while I was injured was that I'm already used to trying to do dishes as I go along, so small amounts at a time. And this certainly helped as well because either I only had to be on the crutch for a little while or I didn't have to use the crutch because I could lean up against the sink. A couple other challenges that I found while I was injured and on crutches was taking a shower. Now, this is a fairly large shower, and I appreciate that, and it does have a little seat in it. So I could obviously sit down, but that's not how I usually take a shower. So one of the things that I thought about making sure that we have, that's not good just for injuries, but I think as we get older... It's going to be some type of a grab bar, and I found these on Amazon, and we might give one a try. In most cases, it's really difficult working in an RV bedroom because they are so tiny and so tight. In this case, once again, it was a little bit more comforting because I didn't have anywhere to fall except to on the bed. My stability issue wasn't an issue while I was in the bedroom. Now, I want to give you a really quick bonus tip. You'll see that I have my pants double folded on a hanger. This gives me extra space below the hanging pants so that I can have some sackable 
drawers or baskets or other kinds of things to have more space in my closet. So another bonus tip for you today. And of course, making the bed in an RV is so much fun and so easy that we all do it every day perfectly, right? Well, I'm going to be very transparent and tell you that the way I'm making the bed today isn't because of my hip. It's the way I make it every day. It's just too hard to try to make these beds perfect. By the way, sorry about the light. I forgot to shut the curtain and the daylight and camera light just didn't like each other. But basically what I do is I just pull the blankets up and I've just got the summer blankets on right now. And I just kind of fold them over on the edge and then put up the uh, pillow shams because it makes the bed look nice. It's not perfect, but nobody goes in our bedroom but ourselves anyway. But at least we feel like it's of comfort. We have a really nice mattress on our bed. I'll link it below. But we also have a pillow topper on there that we had bought beforehand. And we just put it on here. And it makes our bed quite high. And I was having a lot of problems with my hip trying to get into the bed. So by having this little step stool right beside it made it just perfect for me to be able to get onto the bed safely. Well, that was my experience. And I recognize that it was nothing compared to what so many people have to live with. And whether it's an injury or it's an aging situation, regardless, every RV, every person, and every injury or situation is going to be different. But maybe this will give you some ideas to think about just to make you a little bit more proactive should you need crutches in your future. Hey, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. And would you do me a big favor? If you like this video, would you like and subscribe? And be sure to use the links below. We want to bring you a lot more content. And that is what will make it happen.